dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly we hail. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail, a United States Army and Air Force presentation. We have a special announcement for you at the conclusion of our program. But now, act one of our story, Flowers for Suzette, starring Tom Drake as Tony Powers. <laughs> I guess most everyone who liked fine, custom-built automobiles had heard of that American in Paris, Anthony Powers, and the company bearing his name. And by the same token, everyone who knew Tony Powers in Paris just couldn't believe the rumors. For the Tony who, each afternoon, was seen driving along the Place de la Concorde with a different feminine companion on his arm, was actually settling down. And is there anything wrong with that? After all, there's a time in every man's life, or should I say the woman. In my case, her name was Suzette. She was modeling in Paris when we met, had motion picture ambition, and a potential star if there ever was one. <laughs> I had to work quickly to redirect her ambition toward me, and I was successful. Our engagement was announced. I rather expected that my pessimistic but trusted assistant, Jean Dubrat, would be pleased at the news. As he entered my office that morning, Good morning, Tony. John, my friend. I dare say you've heard the news about my engagement. Oh, yes. Congratulations. But, John, you don't seem surprised. Tony, it is the first of the month. I have in my hand the bills. Prominent among them are three. Flowers for Suzette, 5,000 francs. Perfume for Suzette, 8,470 francs. A mink coat for Suzette. I cannot say the figure without trembling. <laughs> then you did know, Jean. And that's why you're not surprised. Tony, I can always tell the trend of your affections by the bills at the first of the month. Well, John, I thought you'd be pleased that I'm at last settling down. Are you? What do you mean? You had a very long luncheon yesterday with uh, Madeleine. Oh, oh, that. <laughs> that was merely to explain things. Madeleine was always so, so sensitive. Mm. But we parted the sincerest of friends. Suzette was here yesterday afternoon, looking for you and very upset. Oh? Well, I, uh, I couldn't tell her about Madeleine. She never would have understood. Tony, I hope you're serious about Suzette. I am, Jean. I was never more serious in my life. Hmm, that's what I'm afraid of. Well, I am. But why this unusual interest in Suzette? I merely think she's a very charming girl, if a bit petulant. Now, I don't want to see her take a wrong tangent. Why, Brooke over at the French cinema said she has an excellent future in pictures. Don't ever say that to her. I had time enough convincing her that I was her... But now, how are the plans for the preview of our new model? Everything is arranged. We'll have the preview Thursday of next week with a big banquet for lots of celebrities beforehand. Ah, that sounds good. Oh, by the way, there are several of our American friends and customers now in Paris whom I think should be invited to the dinner. Among them, uh, Sam Belwin, the motion picture producer. Oh, is Sam in town? Yes. Well, by all means, invite him. All right. And whoever else you think you should. Good. And don't worry about Suzette. As for what happened yesterday Wait. afternoon, oh, that'll be easily here explained. Here Suzette now. So, I find you in. Suzette, darling. Do not darling me. Where were you yesterday afternoon when we were going to have lunch? Well, I, uh, I was away on business. The sale, you know. Business, huh? Monkey business. I saw you in the cafe with that woman. But, Suzette, I can explain. And you promise me never again. No other woman but me. Ah, oh, Suzette, please. And I find you with this woman, this Madeleine, so chummy. You who made promises. You who were the light of my world. Suzette, you're getting very dramatic and very dull. Oh, you think so, huh? Well, let me tell you what I think. I was a fool to ever consider giving up my work in pictures for you. Goodbye. Just like that. And so uncalled for. But she'd be back, they usually did. My charming Suzette. So angry, the sparks flew off her. 
You wanted to gather them up and her with them and ask for forgiveness. I waited a day confidently. No call from her. The second day, I sent roses and a note of explanation. <laughs> Suzette loved roses, you know. Still no call. The third day, more flowers and still no results. I decided to bury my pride. I walked over to her hotel. Outside, a flower vendor confronted me. Flowers, 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 monsieur? Oh, why, uh, yes, yes. You have roses? Oh, the most beautiful roses. Uh, here you are, monsieur. Her favorite? Yes, yes, indeed. Ah, then they will be both appropriate and successful. I hope you're right. <laughs> I help you. Miss Suzette, please. Tony Powers calling. Miss Suzette's not in. She's at the studio. At this hour? I'm sorry, mister. Is there any message? Uh, no, no. I'll leave these flowers if I may. Flowers, flowers. Oh, well, monsieur, uh, what luck? No luck. Oh, that is too bad. But then I've been thinking. Perhaps horses are losing their charm with women. Oh? Oh, why is that? Well, a very lovely young lady in the hotel down there has been giving me roses the last few days more than I can sell. How do you like that? She even gave away my roses. This was becoming serious. I kept thinking how ridiculous it was. Even if it had happened. Maybe she was different. Maybe that's why I loved her. Had I lost my touch the only time it mattered... I thought so, until the next afternoon when she suddenly appeared in my office. <laughs> then the old confidence returned. Hello, Tony. Well, you're back. You sound as if you expected it. I did. You're always so sure of yourself. Why not? I've gone more than halfway in this silly disagreement. Are you, uh, ready to say uncle? I am not. And why did you come here? I, uh... Well, I came here to tell you. Sam Belwin, the American motion picture producer for my last picture. He has made an offer I can't refuse. So, I'm going to Hollywood. We pause briefly from our story, Flowers for Suzette, starring Tom Drake, to bring you an important message. Here's what you young men have been waiting for. Under the Air Force Aviation Career Plan, you can choose your type of training before you enlist. That's right. You list the three technical Air Force schools of your choice. Then, when you've been selected for one, you may enlist for three, four, or five years. It's a great opportunity, men. Get your application tomorrow at your local recruiting station. And now... Act two of Flowers for Suzette, starring Tom Drake as Tony Powers, president of the Powers Automobile Company, Paris. The news that Suzette was going to America had Tony spinning around in circles. It certainly did. My head was a wooden horse on the carousel, the top spinning on a marble floor. It was the day of our new model preview, and we had the big publicity dinner to plan for. But I wasn't thinking of that. I was thinking of Sam Bellwin, the motion picture producer, and the treasure he was taking away from me. On an impulse, I telephoned him. Hello? Sam, this is Tony Powers. Yes, Tony. You're coming to dinner tonight. Oh, indeed. I thought I might be able to talk you out of a new convertible. We have some beautiful models, Sam. Beautiful uh, prices, too? That depends on whether you're in the motion picture business or selling automobiles. (laughs) (laughs) Sam, I understand you signed a very dear friend of mine. Who's that? Suzette. Is she a French actress? Why, why, yes. Mm, I know the name, but I've never even met her, let alone talked to her. Is she clever? Oh, oh, very, very clever, Sam. (laughs) But not as clever as she thinks she is. I must have uh, understood wrong, Sam. I'll see you tonight. John, John, come in here. What is it, Tony, what is it? I'll be dining tonight at the Café Latel with Suzette. Are you? Really? I am. Really? But the preview dinner... And well, all you the... go ahead with it. I'll get there just as soon as I can. And if there are any calls for me, you can reach me at the cafe. So that was Suzette's game. Sharpening the only sword she possessed. 
and with such naive deceit. I felt wonderful because I knew she was really mine. I arranged dinner at the cafe, and I didn't have to insist too hard that she join me. The lights were low, and the music was soft, and she began to say the things I wanted her to. Tony, you can be so charming, so lovable. Darling, you do forgive me, don't you? Oh, yes, Tony. And now, uh, what about us? Well... Of course, I, I know what you'll be giving up. Your marvelous opportunity in pictures. Oh, that was like a dream anyway. Well, darling? You would be a good boy. For you, I'll be perfect. And now you know what? By the strangest coincidence, there's a nice little church just a block from here. Would you like to see it? Yes, Tony. <laughs> We departed from the cafe, but not before I was called to the phone. We were married in a little church, and as we hurried back to announce the news, my wife spoke to me. Oh, Mary, my husband. You are my husband, aren't you? I am. Darling, I believe we should start our marriage right. I have a confession to make. <laughs> I know all about it. It concerns Sam Belwin and your contract. You know? Yes. He's a very dear friend of mine. I spoke to him today. Oh, I am ashamed I deceived you. I wanted to make you sorry, and I only made myself sorry. Well, darling, you were just a little premature. What do you mean? Well, after I spoke to Sam today, he ran one of your pictures. He was the one who called me at the cafe. He said he was sold on you that you could write your own ticket. And what did you say? I told him he was too late, that I was just about to take an option on you. For life. Our star, Tom Drake, returns for a curtain call right after this important message from Wendell Niles. Men, the career of the future is in the air. And your future is the career in the Air Forces. That's why the Air Force is giving you the opportunity to pick the school of your choice before you enlist. There's no obligation to you. You sign no enlistment papers until you've been accepted for the Air Force school you've chosen. Get the details on the aviation career plan at your nearest recruiting station tomorrow. Now, here again is our star and our producer. A delightful performance certainly demands a curtain call. And, Tom, we're very grateful to you for your splendid performance here in our theater of stars. Well, that's very nice of you, C.P. Let me assure you I enjoyed every minute of it. And they tell me, Tom, that you very rarely find time to get away from the soundstage for a little microphone duty. <laughs> that's right, C.P. And that made it more of a pleasure to face this very potent microphone of yours here. For I understand it goes into practically every town, village, and hamlet in America. Yes, Tom, we're very pleased, and I think with reason, that Proudly We Hail is now heard each week on more than 900 radio stations. That certainly constitutes an amazing addition to radio's book of records, and it couldn't happen to a more worthwhile cause. But now, C.P., I'm sure your audience would like to know the playbill for next time. Next week, we present Edward Arnold in a delightful sea story you won't want to miss. Now, the special news we promised you. Starting the first of the year, Proudly We Hail becomes a full half-hour dramatic program featuring your favorite star and story. And we've dedicated ourselves to make this new, bigger program the finest possible. Tom Drake appeared to the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges the appearances of all motion picture stars on this program. Remember next week, Edward Arnold. Until then, thanks for listening. This is C.P. McGregor saying cheerio from Hollywood. Thank <laughs> you.